This legendary singer-guitarist wrote a bitter, cutthroat rocker calling out his ex-girlfriend, you know, accusing her of sleeping around on him you know, when they were together. The thing is, she had to sing it alongside him because they were in the same band. She'd have her own say in another hit for one of the most ruthless and honest albums ever. It's everybody's favorite rock and roll soap opera, The Battle Between the Exes, and those who were left to pick up the pieces. The story's coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember the very first music video you saw as a child, you're gonna relate to this channel, whether it was live or just a music video. The stories of the songs and the albums of your life. Make sure that you subscribe below, click the bell and all that stuff, and uh, check us out on Patreon as well. So it's time for another edition of Number One in Our Hearts. This is where we discuss a classic song that just should have been number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. But it didn't make it. And many are shocked a lot of times because most people assumed a lot of these great songs were number one when I talk about them. So I'm gonna start this episode with a question. What do you do when your heart's in pain? When your heart's in pain. A desperate question that Frank Sinatra entreated in a heart-wrenching interpretation of Arnold Sungard and Alec Wilder's beautifully melancholy composition, Where Do You Go? Great song. Where do you go? For Lindsey Buckingham, who was you know, struggling with the agony of breaking up with Stevie Nicks, he transported his being into writing a song that was called Go Your Own Way. A song that many of us have sung so many times, but when you really start thinking about the meaning of the words, it takes on a whole new set of feelings. You can call it well known that Lindsay and Stevie were lovers, as well as bandmates, while they were both members of the supergroup Fleetwood Mac, and also Buckingham Nicks before that. But by the time Fleetwood Mac began to record their 11th studio album, Rumors, uh, Stevie and Lindsay were in the middle of a complicated breakup. In fact, the entire band was facing the trauma of crumbling relationships. Besides what was happening with Stevie and Lindsay, the marriage between Christine and John McVie, that was dissolving. Of course, founder Mick Fleetwood's marriage with his second wife, Jenny Boyd, that was coming to a crushing end. Uh, Fleetwood Mac was coming off their hugely successful self-titled LP in 75, and their record label had grand expectations for the follow-up record. Of course they did. The strain of the eroding personal relationships combined you know, with label pressure it made it a stressful environment for artistic expression, to say the least. The five members of Fleetwood Mac really had to suck it up. You rely on their professionalism and uh, fight through the adversity to make a, a superior record. Lindsey Buckingham composed Go Your Own Way for Stevie Nicks. He penned the tune at a house in Florida that the band rented while working on new material for Rumors. In addition to the tension between the band members, though, the rented house was reportedly haunted, you know, giving the atmosphere even more negative energy. Can you imagine, oh, I wish they would have recorded all of that, had cameras going. Go Your Own Way was intended to be a conversation starter in an effort to have honest closure and to move their lives forward. The Knicks-Buckingham split was very difficult, especially for Buckingham. You know, he'd known Stevie since they were teenagers. Writing the song was a way to release all the frustration and the anger that Lindsay was feeling about uh, the breakup that she had just had left him completely devastated. How can I, when you won't take it from me? Go Your Own Way is primarily guitar oriented with Lindsay singing lead vocal and performing that lead guitar. The song manages to maintain an upbeat tone while concurrently conveying Lindsay's emotionally conflicted lyrics, making the track a cathartic vehicle for him. If I could, baby, I'd give you my world. Cathartic for him, very hurtful for Stevie. One of the lines in Go Your Own Way that was scathingly personal for Stevie Nicks is found in Lindsay's second verse. Packing up, shacking up is all you want to do. Packing up, shacking up is all you want to do. 
The thing is, Stevie swears that she never shacked up with another man while she and Lindsay were a couple. She pleaded with Lindsay to change that lyric time and time again, but he refused. Stevie insists that Lindsay knew there wasn't any truth to the statement, that Lindsay only created the lyric to really torment her for leaving him. Stevie would counter with the number one smash, Dreams. Uh, you know, the number one hit from rumors that uh, she directed squarely at Lindsay, especially with her penetrating passage, players only love you when they're playing. When Stevie sang players only love you when they're playing, obviously Stevie had her own suspicions about Lindsay's secret dalliances. As early as 73, Stevie wrote a, a song titled Crying in the Night uh, that implied that uh, Lindsay was sleeping with groupies who would leave him crying in the night. She would leave you crying in the night. Of course, there's always two sides of the story and a breakup as we know from our own personal uh, horrible experience is actually the fault of both people for the most part. You know, at Fleetwood Mac, you didn't ever have to read it in the gossip papers. It was always in the music, it was in the lyrics for all to see. The prevailing rhythm of Go Your Own Way was fashioned after the drumming of Charlie Watts on the Rolling Stones track, Street Fighting Man. Uh, Lindsey loved the vibe of Street Fighting Man and demonstrated how he wanted drummer Mick Fleetwood to mimic Watts' snare to Tom style for Go Your Own Way. Uh, by knocking two boxes of Kleenex together. Very cool. Mick Fleetwood, of course, has an unorthodox drumming style due in part to his dyslexia. In order to achieve the groove that Lindsay wanted, Mick had to improvise and find a way to make it work within his technique because playing the tom across the beat while allowing the kick drum to occupy the middle beat very challenging for him, very challenging. But uh, Mick Fleetwood, of course, one of the most renowned drummers of the entire rock era, of uh, entire music history. I mean, the human metronome, really. He was able to perform incredible, inexplicable magic on his drums. His peers are often baffled by his unique style that is a product of dyslexia. Mick's dyslexia has tempered the way he approaches rhythm you know, and the way he plays his instrument. In his memoirs, Mick wrote, by nature, what we drummers do is manage a series of spinning plates. My methods of keeping my plates spinning are entirely my own. Uh, Mick further stated that he has no idea how to explain in musical terms what he's doing in a particular song, uh, making it impossible for him to answer the quizzical admirers who attempt to imitate him. The subject of how dyslexia and music work together, it's an interesting one. Many scientists claim that uh, training dyslexics with uh, music could contribute to improved brain circuits, which are common in music and language processes. Now, as we further break down this, this rock masterpiece, really, I want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. Get the latest deals from Zenny by downloading the Zenny app. Really quick, really easy. Check out the Zenny app today. You can get all your deals there. Now, while approaching his guitar sound on Go Your Own Way, Buckingham wanted the track to exude raw emotion. He fancied taking two completely different guitar sounds, you know, one dirty, one clean, and, you know, meld them together to make one very rich guitar line. The fiery guitar solo at the song's crescendo, that was a two-man production with Lindsay playing the role of architect and producer Ken Calais as the, the master builder, if you will. The tasty licks were created by Buckingham while Calais uh, pieced together, uh, I think it was six guitar takes to get the, the finished product. He used multiple faders to overlay each take, playing the console like it was an actual musical instrument. The result was a blistering guitar solo that many critics extol as the greatest of Lindsay's long tenure with Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. 
Lindsay added an acoustic guitar track late in the recording process that brought the, the whole song to life, really. He revealed that the acoustic piece acted as a foil for the vocals and a rhythmic counterpoint. Very interesting. If I could. Lindsey Buckingham might be the, the most underappreciated guitarist in rock history. I mean, he doesn't get near the recognition that he deserves as a player. He's such a magician with, with the guitar. Normally, as a guitarist, you influence the up-and-comers who grew up with a, you know, the band's music. But Lindsey's different. He was a major influencer in the 70s on many singer-songwriters that were out at the same time as him. Uh, Neil Sean Journey has said that that Lindsay's playing was an influence on this Journey classic. I had just heard on the radio, I was listening to some new Fleetwood Mac record, I think it was Go Your Own Way. And I thought, Lindsay Buckingham, I go, oh, that's some cool guitar, like bluesy, but different. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of stuck in my head at the time. And so that was really the inspiration for yeah. the beginning of Wheel in the Sky. Mm -hmm. I was just hearing a song on the radio. Kenny Loggins has said as much. I think Lindsay is underrated as one of the great rock guitarists. I mean, he blended finger picking with rock and roll better than anybody ever had. Um, and really, really took it uh, another step up. And I think he brought a lot to Stevie's stuff. I think he was a major force in commercializing Stevie's melodies, which tend to be very stream of consciousness. And he sort of roped her in, found where the hook was and turned it into a thing. John McVie bridged the guitar and drum rhythm with a deftly executed bass riff. while Christine McVie provided an organ track that is subtle, but essential to the fullness of the, the track's swelling power. Christine's contributions on Fleetwood Mac songs, they're just often overshadowed. But she was an invaluable part of the band's enormous success, for sure. Stevie, Christine, and Lindsay were able to liberate the emotional restraint from their respective personal strife and their shared vocals on that you can go your own way chorus. You can go your own way. Yeah. And you can feel as well as hear the earnest aggression in their delivery on that explosive chorus. It's incredibly dynamic and pitch perfect, truly empowering. You can go your own way. Go Your Own Way preceded the Rumors LP in December of 76. Rumors is truly an inspired collection of songs that were a divulgence of profound heartbreak and betrayal, discord, and bitter acrimony. It came at the perfect time, you know? It resonated with people around the world in a phenomenal way, becoming one of the best-selling records of all time with international sales that are over 30 million units. Go Your Own Way was nominated for Best Vocal Arrangement at the 78 Grammy Awards. In 77, the tune rose to number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. It hit number 38 in the UK, number 11 in Canada, and number four in South Africa. Its highest ascent was in Belgium and the Netherlands, where it scaled all the way to the top of the singles chart. So the week it peaked at number 10, Barbara Streisand's song Evergreen, the theme from the 70s remake of A Star Is Born, was at number one. <laughs> followed by Fly Like an Eagle by Steve Miller. Like that was at number two. Other artists and songs that were in the top 10 that very same week, uh, you had Daryl Hall and John Oates with Rich Girl. And they're going too far, cause you know it don't matter anyway. Night Moves by Bob Seger. Working on a night move. Blinded by the Light by Man for Man's Earth Band. All of these songs that still resonate today, in my opinion, none more so than Go Your Own Way. I mean, my own feelings about Go Your Own Way, if you listen to it carefully, to me it's always been the most bitter and scathing and spiteful rock songs in the, the music canon. It's a scorned lover giving the other the stark and cold middle finger. Yeah, exactly. It's the, the foremost middle finger love song. Go, go. 
Can you ever hear it in the chorus? I mean, Lindsay's tone is overwhelmingly caustic. You can understand why it was uh, so difficult for Stevie to, to sing live. In the timbre of Lindsay's guttural veins, you know, popping out of his neck, desperate yet determined vocal, the words are certainly daggers aimed with precision. The bitterness is even as haunting as Sting's obsessive, possessive, controlling tone in every breath you take. You know, it would come a few years later, both just uh, scathing songs. Every step you take, I'll be watching. Go Your Own Way is pretty hardcore if you really read between the lines, but somewhat misunderstood by listeners because of that catchy melodic chorus. You know, it's a little bit camouflage. But listen deeply enough, you can't miss it. And even though Lindsay is saying you can go your own way, you can also hear the mask, you know, the masking going on. Underneath it all, he's bitter because he's still deeply in love, which really makes it even more heart wrenching. And you just know that at one time, Stevie and Lindsay were passionately linked. But that fire burned so fiercely, it became toxic. It's still like that. The current status of Fleetwood Mac is the perfect summation of the song, kinda, right? Go Your Own Way has had a resurgence in pop culture with use of the song in heavily played TV ad campaigns for National Car Rental and BMW. A new version was recorded by Lissy in 2011 and placed in the 2013 motion picture Safe Haven. Alyssi's cover was recycled for the BMW campaign. It's also a very cool acoustic styled version for an Xfinity TV commercial performed by Moses Sumney. Your wireless, your rules, your savings. Probably the greatest compliment from a filmmaker to a band uh, for its use is in the film, uh, Robert Zemeckis' film, uh, Forrest Gump, with the movie using some of the most iconic songs of all time as the backdrop of the film celebrating the decades of the baby boom generation. This is the right thing to do. Christine McVie calls Go Your Own Way the best song that Lindsey Buckingham has ever written. In conclusion, though it's a song that vaguely camouflages spite and bitterness, the master recording of the song stands above all of that. It's the symbol of a band that despite all the infighting and the drama and the strife, it's a strong creative connection that fuels a perfect rock song and a song that is number one in our hearts and still sounds brand new after all these years. You can go your own way. Leave is a comment about this song, this life-changing band, the Rumors LP. Uh, tell us what your memories are, but let's have a good discussion below. If you like our channel, we invite you to subscribe below to be a permanent part of this. Check us out on Patreon as well for more exclusive content. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Yeah.